I'm Stephen Teitelbaum from Santa Monica, California, and I'm past president of ASURF, the Aesthetic Surgery, Education, and Research Foundation. In the July-August 2017 edition of the Aesthetic Surgery Journal, there's a very important article, which is the report of the ASURF Task Force on Gluteal Fat Grafting. We were looking at the rate of deaths from this procedure, the mechanism of those deaths, and then strategies at how we could reduce the incidence of this devastating complication in this very young and otherwise healthy population. We looked at the total number of deaths we were able to document against the ASAP's procedural statistics telling us how many were done. We sent out an international questionnaire asking surgeons about their experience and we looked at the statistics from Quad A. And the results showed that the rate is probably somewhere between 1 in 2,000 and 1 in 6,000. To be specific, we found and were able to document 25 independent cases that we know for sure actually occurred over the past five years. And during that period, the ASAP statistics suggest about 100,000 cases were done. So that 1 in 4,000 number, it really can't be much less than that. And in fact, there were cases that we couldn't document for sure. Surgeons wouldn't talk to us, so we couldn't be sure they weren't duplicates. So the rate is probably even higher than that number. Why are these deaths occurring? What happens is there's some kind of an injury to the superior or inferior gluteal vein, as showed as this great illustration for this article. And extravascular fat under higher pressure enters the lower pressure venous system. Those gluteal veins go right into the internal iliac, which go up to the inferior vena cava to the heart and lung. And these patients at autopsy are found to have fat in their inferior vena cava, right atrium, right ventricle, or in the lungs, and gross macroscopic fat emboli are seen in these areas. So what can we do to make this procedure safer? Well, the first thing is to know the anatomy well. And there are great illustrations by the famous Bill Wynn in this article, which show us where those pedicles are and where we have to be to avoid them. There are also the first ever, we believe, MR angiograms venous phase that show all of the relevant veins in that part of the anatomy. The next thing to do is to avoid injecting deep. Both from an anatomical sense point of view and from the results of the questionnaire, surgeons that went deep had a much higher rate of this problem than surgeons who were superficial. Surgeons that angled deep as opposed to angling parallel to the skin surface also had a higher rate of problems. Surgeons that used thinner and more flexible cannulas had a higher rate of death than those that used thicker and stiffer cannulas. So what you need to do is be sure you know the anatomy, avoid going deep, use a cannula that can't bend, and be sure that if you're using a syringe that it can't tip and bend against it. Maintain constant vigilance and maintain control over the tip. We're trying to still learn more about this. If you hear of a death as soon as possible, contact us at ASURF so that we can get someone out there, a plastic surgeon, to help with the autopsy. And I want to give a special thanks to Mark Mofeed. He was the one who encouraged ASURF to do this. He chaired the task force and was a lead author on this paper. Thanks to Hunter and Fedra and the rest of the staff at Aesthetic Surgery Journal and to the reviewers for their very helpful comments and their very quick review. Also, finally, to Editor-in-Chief Fuad Nahai, who not just expedited this paper, but he also wrote a very important editorial that discusses this procedure and anyone that does this operation needs to read that editorial by him. There are also two excellent discussions on this paper, and reading the paper and those three other pieces, all four of those, is very important. So I hope you enjoy this reading, and this is very important for patient safety. Thank you from ASURF.